to us. Because you were actually involved in this in this cult mm -hmm. in attacking Christians, weren't you? Yes. Um, so we. So I was a channeler. Um, I talked to the demons, and we re they relayed messages to the rest of the cult through me. And their goal was really just to cause chaos. Um, but later on, um, I was 16 when, uh, I'm just going to say it, uh, I met Satan himself, mm -hmm. uh, which really obviously is shocking. Um, <laughs> and his priority for us, it changed the trajectory of the cult. And we started attacking just Christians, going after clergy specifically. Um, we had names, addresses, workplaces, um, and that's what we did. We just harassed Christians. Mm. So and that's <laughs> going on now, isn't it? I mean, that's oh yeah, yeah. There are assignments on uh, people yes. who are actively engaged in uh, in worshiping and ministering. Uh, mm -hmm. including now yourself. So we pray, we plead the blood of Jesus yes. Christ over you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> that the Lord has victory because you realized uh, as this was going on that there were certain Christians or certain people mm -hmm. that would not be at the effect of, of these, uh, these prayer or these chants or these, uh, right. you know, these practices. Yep. So uh, I would actually travel in the spirit, astral projection, to um, influence, I don't know, lust or something on a Christian. And uh, in the spirit, I would see like a dome, like a blue dome over uh, groups of Christians that were praying or... Just through the, all those experiences, I connected that we could not attack Christians as they were actively praying protection from God. Like, there was a no-go zone. Just no, absolutely no power. So, <laughs> that's, I love it now. Like, like yes! <laughs> Thank you, God. Um, but back then, it, it made me very angry. It made the demons very angry. Um... And so, at that point, that made me curious, how is this possible? How can Christians have this power to just nullify the demonics completely? So, uh... <laughs> uh it, I, well, it's, it's the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. That will be done. And, uh, lead me not unto temptation, but deliver me from evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, that Jesus... All right, Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honor to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that sat here laboring in our truth and sincerity. To you, I say Shalom. This is Brother Amon Ariyah from GMS Charlotte, coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. And pretty much in this lesson, I wanted to go into, you know, uh, how this ex-Satanist slash witch, you know, she revealed, you know, the power of, of prayer. And why that's, you know, such a heavy tool that the Lord has left for us to defend ourselves against the wickedness and the evil that's going on in this world. Because whether you people believe it or not, all right, we live in, in very evil times, man. All right. And, you know, the Lord gave us defenses to be able to, you know, uh, defend ourselves against the, the, the wickedness that's going on here. All right. And prayer is a is a very, very powerful, you know, weapon that we have been given to fight against, you know, the, these, you know, demons. All right. And so watching this video was just, you know, further. Well, it should further boost your spirit to know how powerful prayer is, man. Because these elites, they are sending up, you know, uh, different enchantments upon Israel every day. All right. And so 
the most high, hey, he when you read the scriptures, he lets it be known, you know, while prayer is, is so much, you know, uh enforced, man. All right. So before I really get into it, I wanted to start here in the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verse ten. And the title of this, you know, passage in this chapter is titled The Armor of God. Okay. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay. Because, hey, we know that this devil, all right, Esau Edom, the so called white man, all right. He has, you know, tapped all the way in to the left hand, okay? And so he is constantly communing with, you know, Satan and these demons, all right, to, to tap into that left hand power, man. So we have to put on the full armor of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah to protect us against the wickedness that is being, you know, uh, put out in this world, man, okay? It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, Against powers, it's like, let me put this on, uh, do not disturb, all right? But it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places, right? So this isn't just a, you know, a, a, a you know, a fleshly battle, man. No, this is a, a battle, you know, a, a highly spiritual battle. That's going to turn physical, man, okay? Because this is literally, you know, righteousness versus wickedness, man, all right? And, hey, the wicked of this world, as I mentioned, have tapped, you know, fully into the left hand of Yahweh by Hashem Shah, man, okay? And so it's, it's a whole bunch of demonic, you know, uh, uh, activity that is being taken place. And these devils are, are constantly sending up enchantments. All right, you know, against the nation of Israel, man. And this is a new thing because, hey, the nations, you know, uh, of, of old, you know, this this is what they did, you know, trying to, you know, come against the nation of Israel. So when you read in the scriptures about this, you know, this isn't a foreign concept. But the problem with this modern world is that they have mystified, you know, the spiritual world, man. All right. The concept of demons and angels, you know, demonic attacks, you know. Uh, 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 miracles from from on high, these things are are mystified in today's society. So these people don't believe in the supernatural, man. But these things are actually going on as we speak, okay. And as uh, this last part in Ephesians six and twelve, I want to touch on. It says, "All right, well, I'll just read the verse again." It says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and the rulers of darkness being the elites, okay." They are the ones that, that are, are calling the shot. They're the ones that are, are communing with these demons and getting the counsel to do the things that we see them doing in the earth, man. Okay? It says against spiritual wickedness in the high places. And when you, you know, look up in the blood, they have changed it now. But back, you know, a few years ago before they actually, you know, took out, you know, the definition of what this was going into, it used to say are a hierarchy of demons. Okay, because like I said, these devils literally uh, talk to Satan and these demons. Okay, that's how they get, you know, the instruction to do the things that they do, man. Okay, so this is a highly spiritual battle. So just as much as these these uh elites, these devils talk to these demons, all right, the Most High has opened back the access to talk to him through Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and the angels, they, they lift up the prayers. To the Most High when, when we uh when we pray to Him, man. Okay, and as you heard that that woman say, okay, when you are praying to the Most High, all right, you have a, a a protection against those demons that they can't you know get to you, which is why the Lord constantly you know pushes the uh the, the thing of prayer all throughout the scriptures, man. All right, you see all of our ancient forefathers, all right, they were you know always communing with the Lord and praying because they knew that that connection. To our power, all right. Well, was our uh, was our defense, man? Okay. This is why these devils, you know, have set up set up this world to pretty much, you know, disconnect you, you know, from the spiritual to make it seem like you know prayer, you know, doesn't work. You know that it's all about the the carnal. You have to, you know, 
pretty much, you know, do these things without, you know, uh, uh, having a spiritual connection to, to the Most High, man. Okay? It says, verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh by Shem Shah, that you might be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand, right? So you have to have the full armor of Yahweh by Shem Shah to be able to get through these evil days that we are seeing, you know, uh, fastly approaching. It says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, the point, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, right? So it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. You're supposed to be continually tapping in, all right, to prayer, all right? Calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, all right? Asking the Lord for protection, all right? For, for deliverance, for repentance, you know? Whatever you ask the Lord for, you, hey, you constantly are supposed to be in prayer, and that's how you have your defense against these demons. Cause like I like I said, man, hey, Esau is constantly sending up enchantments against the uh against the men of the Lord, man. Okay? Because at the end of the day, like I said, you had, you know, examples of, you know, the different, you know, nations trying to put curses on Israel, but the most high had us guarded because we were in his good graces at the time, man. All right, before we started going off, man. And we're back in that same point right now to where the elect has been woken back up to the truth. And we have been brought back to Yahweh by Hashem Shah. And therefore, all right, we have that protection. Okay. So, as I said, man, we're supposed to be, you know, continually being in prayer, man. All right. Because hey, these devils are, are, are constantly trying to, you know, uh, attack you. All right. Let me get this. Cause as I mentioned, this is this is nothing new, okay. So here's an example of you know the heathen, you know trying to you know uh you know put enchantments on you know uh Jacob, okay. Cause here it is. You had uh this is dealing with, I believe it was uh Balak, and uh and Balaam. All right and. Balak, all right, was a, a Moabite, and he was trying to curse Israel, man, okay, so he had hired um, Balaam to pretty much curse Israel, man, so let me go into that real quick, this is the book of Numbers 22 and verse 10, it says, and Balaam said unto the Most High, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure, I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And Yahweh Shem Shah said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Okay, so hey, these these curses that these heathens try to put up against the nation of Israel. And they 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 pretty much you know are are not you know getting through, all right. And in today's time, this is speaking of the elect, okay, because the elect has been given the hedge of protection against the uh, you know against these damn enchantments uh, that are being sent up, okay. And the reason why the Lord said that those curses didn't go up is because the nation of Israel was blessed. But right now, all right, two thirds of the nation of Israel. They are being, you know, enchanted. They are being, you know, caught up in those, you know, uh, you know, enchantments for lack of better words. But at the end of the day, the elect, that's who the Lord is protecting. Okay. And so it's uh, uh jump into the next chapter. All right, this is Numbers 23 and verse 19. It says, The most high is not a man that he should lie. 
neither the son of man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have com I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it right. Because the times that, you know, uh, make sure I said it right, uh, Balaam tried to curse Israel, he ended up blessing Israel, man. Because like the Most High said, you can't curse what the Most High has blessed, man. Okay? And so, as it says, back in verse 20, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He have not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen per uh, perverseness in Israel. The Lord, his power is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh brought them out of Egypt. He has, it's like he hath as it were the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what have the Most High wrought? Okay, so there is no enchantment against the nation of Israel, but this is speaking of the elect in today's time, man, because two thirds, they they are being, you know, ensnared by those enchantments, man. Okay, but this is why Yahweh Hashem Yahushua told us, okay, to put on the full armor of, 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 of God, man. All right. And, you know, be continual in prayer. All right. Like, for example, First Thessalonians 5 and 17, it reads, pray without ceasing. Okay. We're to we're to continually be in prayer because that's how we get the protection. All right, as you heard the 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 woman say, all right, when you know she tried, you know, to send the demons, you know, on the uh, she said Christians, but we understand the 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 real Christians is speaking of the Israelites, man, because when you go into the history of what that word came from, all right, that was actually a derogatory term that was put on the Israelites, man. So everybody isn't a Christian, man, okay? Because the word Christian really goes back to the uh, the Hebrew word uh, Mashiachim, which was the followers of the Messiah, okay? So this is Acts 11 and 26, and it reads, And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, right? So this is speaking of the Israelites that fall after the Messiah, that fall after Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? They are, they are the original Christians, but like I said, that, that term was a derogatory term that was put on the believers. Okay? So Christians, you know, uh, today, they are not the true followers of the Messiah, man. All right? To, do, to be honest with you. All right, these Christians, they, they are under the enchantment of Christianity because Christianity, all right, is, is another form of witchcraft because, you know, you following after Jesus Christ, man, that's an idol. And and the tenets of Christianity really go into Satanism, man. So you are actually under the spell of Satan, all right, if you're calling yourself a, a, a Christian that believes in Christianity, man, okay? The true believers, all right, that's who she was speaking of. All right, the, the true believers of Israel, man. I mean, it's like the true believers of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's who she was speaking on. All right, that had that that uh that blue dome over them when they were praying to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Because first and foremost, for you to truly have that protection, you have to call upon the correct name. So anybody that's praying to Jesus Christ, man, you ain't protected. All right, those demons are having field days on you, man. Okay, because we understand that the the name is a key part. All right, of that prayer. This is why that was made a mystery that wasn't given to everybody, man. All right, so that number one is an indicator to show you who truly is out here protected, man. Okay, because the true believers, and the scripture said that they will call upon the Lord's name. All right, let me get that real quick. This is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 17, verse 10. It says, and the elect shall praise his holy name. Okay, so the elect, all right, the true believers of Yahweh Shah 
All right, they will be calling upon his true name. And that's how them prayers are being answered, okay? Because when you send up those prayers, all right, the angels are delivering it, you know, uh, uh, to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, let me, let me get that real quick. Lord willing. Uh, one second. Let me charge this phone. Okay, because like I was saying, the angels are literally carrying up the prayers of the elect unto the ears of Yahweh himself, man. Okay? Well, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, but, you know, nonetheless, that doesn't change the point. All right? If I remember how it goes, let me see. If I got to type it in Google. Bear with me. Believe it's in the apocrypha. Right, well, this is a good one, but it's it's another one. Revelation eight and three, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne, okay? So they, the prayers are being presented to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah in, you know, uh, uh, in the heavens, man. But it's another one, man. I'm trying to remember. It's in the Apocrypha, I know for sure. If not, you know, I'm going to continue on, but I know for sure the angels carry, carry the prayers, man. Like, I don't want to dwell too dwell on too much, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and go to something else because I, I I can't remember how it's worded. All right, but like I said, man, the 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 angels are, are bringing up. The prayers to uh to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Okay, so as as we're praying to the Lord, all right, we are actually being protected from the demons, from Satan, man. All right, that's why the scriptures you know detail about uh continually being in the spirit, because when you're in the spirit, all right, the demons can't get to you, man. Okay, because you are in that in that uh, righteous vibration. Because of the connection with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah that's being established, okay, and so this is why the Lord he he gives you a, a provision against the wickedness that's going on here, man. This is Psalms thirty four and seven. It says the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. All right, so we have actual angels that's protecting us from these demons too, man. Okay, so this is why you gotta you know. Believe that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is, is actually protecting you as we as we are, you know, uh praying to him, as we're, you know, doing the things that he commands of us, man. Those things aren't going, you know, without effect. All right. They're not, they're not, you know, you know, pretty much falling on deaf ears, man. The Lord, he sees it, he hears it, and he's, you know, actively, you know, uh, uh providing and protecting us, man. Okay. Because these demons are at work, man. That's as you heard her say, man, hey, this this is going on to this day, man. These devils, they actually have, you know, a, a you know, priest, you know, a high priest, you know, these warlock witches and warlocks that literally that's all they do is just send up, you know, these different enchantments on Jacob, man. Okay? But like I said, the elect is protected because we know Satan is, is looking, all right, to to get at 
the believers, man. All right. Excuse me. This is Job chapter one, verse seven. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, and a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the Most High and is sure of evil. Okay, <clears throat> because one thing I want to make mention too. All right, hey, these demons know who the elect is, man. Okay, Satan and these demons know exactly who who the true believers are, man. Which is why we constantly are right, are being attacked, you know, throughout this world, man. Okay, this is why you go through, you know, the certain things that you go through. Everybody, you know, they walk is different, but we all, you know, face these different, you know, demonic attacks, man. Some are, are, are heavier than others. Okay, but nonetheless, Satan knows exactly who the elect is, man. Okay, it says, then Satan answered the Lord and said, do of Job fear you how about Shem Yahushua for not? Has not thou made in the hedge about him? And about his house and about all that he have on every side. Because when you go into, you know, Job, hey, Job was a righteous man. It said that he, he feared the most high and he is sure of evil. Okay. So hey, the Lord had, you know, Job protected. Okay. As Satan said, the Lord had the hedge around Job. So when you look up that word hedge, it says uh, from the Edomon online. It says a, a figurative sense of boundary or barrier. Okay, and and did you not hear her say that when the the Christians were praying, which you know, like I said, the, the true Christians are are the true believers in Yahweh by Shem Shah, the elect. It said they that they had a ba a blue dome around them. Okay, the dome is another word for a barrier. Okay. So the, the the believers had ba had a barrier around them, all right, and that's the that hedge that the Lord has around His elect, man. Okay, so going uh going back to Job, Job, verse uh, chapter one, verse ten again, has not thou had uh, suck it, has not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land because hey, Job was a uh, was a true believer in Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, which shows he was an Israelite. He wasn't no damn Edomite, like you got people saying, man. All right, the fact that the scriptures tell you that he was a just man that is sure of evil and feared the Lord, that alone lets you know that he was an Israelite, man. Okay, and because you know the Lord, you know he, you know he looked upon Job and you know found that he was a a, a righteous man. The Lord blessed him. Okay, it says, verse 11, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. All right, this is this is pretty much a wager that is being, you know, made between the Most High and Satan to, to test Job's, uh, his faith, man. Okay, and so the Most High, you know, allowed Job to penetrate that hedge and, and, and touch Job, man. Okay. It says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Right. So Satan, all right, just like how you read, I was reading here about how he was given, all right, permission to go and tempt Job. This is the same, you know, situation that all of us find ourselves in, man. Okay. We are all constantly being tempted and tested by Satan and these demons, man. OK, which is why you got to constantly be in prayer. You got to constantly be in the spirit and, and call upon your how by Shem Yahweh Shai, man, because hey, these demons are too powerful. Satan especially is too powerful to try to deal with on your own, man. You're going to lose every time, man, because we're in this in this simple flesh, man. OK, so hey, you got to understand the condition of the battle. You got to know to position the position that we're in, man. All right. We're in a in, in a. A weakened state right now, man, where Satan has the ability, you know, to uh, to overtake us if we're not careful. Okay, this is First Peter chapter five verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, 
seeking whom he may devour. And that's exactly what that woman was speaking of, man. Okay. She's, and she was saying that hey, her and, and these uh, other people, these other Satanists, these other witches, that they would constantly go around looking for, for Christians to attack, man. All right. Believers to attack. And that's happening as we speak, man. And you can find many videos going into that, man. All right. Because like I said, it, when you watch this, you know, the, the, this testimony that she was doing, okay, to, you know, the common man on the earth, they would look at that like that's some, you know, sci-fi, you know, uh, horror movie type bullshit. No, this is real life. This is real spiritual warfare that's taking place, man, which is why this this is so important to talk about and understanding, you know, like I said, the condition of the battle, man. All right. The things that are more powerful are the things that you can't see. Okay, and hey, just wait till the most high allows your eyes to be open and you really see how demonic this word really is, man. Hey, these people are walking around with demons on them as we speak. Okay, but if you believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, hey, those demons have been, you know, took off you and you have been given, you know, a hedge of protection. Okay, which is why you got to constantly be praying, man. That's why the apostle elder, uh, uh, Raka always, you know, pushes prayer, 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 prayer for everything. All right. From the moment you wake up to you leave your house. All right. Whatever you're doing. OK, you got to be in prayer. OK, because that's the only way we're protected. All right. From the evil of this world, man. OK, this is Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It says rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation continually instant in prayer okay matter of fact let me let me go up just so I can get some context in this Salakia alright so this is Romans chapter 12 and I'm gonna start at I'm going to start at verse 9. It says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continually instant in prayer. Okay. I'm going to read this in the uh, in the NLT. It says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Okay. Because we understand, according to uh, Isaiah, uh, what's that, 59 and 15, I believe. Okay, let me get that real quick. And I'm going to come back to this. Hey, we, we are being targeted. Because the simple fact that we are in this truth, we have turned from the ways of evil and are seeking righteousness. We are truly seeking Yahweh Bashim Yahweh These demons are coming after you, man. Okay. Isaiah 59 and 15, it says, Yea, true faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Okay, so it says, because you departed from evil, you have become a prey. And these demons are constantly going to come after you, man. They're going to constantly, you know, uh, attack you. But our defense is the scriptures. All right, our defense is prayer and, and our belief in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Okay. So, like I said, man, hey, be continually instant in prayer, all right? So, when you're in the spirit, and you can feel those demonic attacks coming, you got to pray to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, all right? That's the only way we're going to be able to protect ourselves against these, you know, demonic attacks, man, because these these people are, are praying to destroy, all right, the true believers, man, okay? But like I said, you can't, you can't curse what the Most High has blessed, and the elect is blessed, man, okay? So, continuing on, this is um, Psalms 55 and 16. 
It says, as for me, I will call upon Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Okay, so constantly praying all different times throughout the day. Man, this is King David telling you himself. Hey, he prayed, all right, evening, morning, and noon. Okay? Hey, so he was constantly making sure that his head was, you know, was constantly being refined, constantly being put up, man. All right, constantly having your how about Shem Yahweh Shah, you know, uh, uh, hear his, his, you know, supplications, man. Because he understood the, the, the position that we are in, man. He understood we were at war, that we're at war. Just as we understand we're at war, man. Like I said, it's a spirit. This is a highly spiritual war that we we are in the middle of, man. All right. So we need as much prayer as, as we possibly can send up. And the beauty of it, scriptures tell you the Lord has given us you know, uh, 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 the, the language back, man. Okay? But before I go to that, I just want to get another example to show you. Okay? Because the scriptures tell you, you know, uh, uh, real quick. Job 8 and 8. It says, For I inquire, I pray thee of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their, fa of their fathers. NLT. Just ask the previous generation. Pay attention to the experience of our ancestors. Okay. And we know that, you know, King David faced much opposition. Okay. We know dealing with Daniel, because Daniel is another example. All right. I'm going to read this real quick. This is Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his window, his window was being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks to Yahweh, and gave thanks before his power, as he did a four time. Okay, so Daniel eight, he understood that prayer was important. Okay, so much so that he said he prayed three times a day. Man, he had you know face you know the east face Jerusalem. And he prayed to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? It says, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his power. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that asks, it's like that, shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save O.D., O king? shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians with altar of not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but making his petition three times a day. Right. And so just as the position that we're about to face in this world to where Esau is about to establish himself as God, and he doesn't want anybody worshiping any any God but him. Okay, this was taking place here in uh, uh, uh in Daniel's time, man. Okay, and Daniel was about to, he's about he was about to be put to the test. All right, by being thrown in the lion's den. Okay, but Daniel didn't fear that because he continually prayed to Yahweh by Shemiah Shah to be protected. And what eventually ended up happening when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. All right, the Most High delivered him. Okay. And so that's the same faith we have to have going into to, in today's time, man. Because not only did the Lord give us, all right, access back to him, all right, through prayer, he gave us, you know, the uh, the language, okay? He gave us the Lashawan Kodash back, man, all right? Get that real quick. So not only did we get, you know, the, uh, the names back to pray to him, he gave us back our, 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 our holy tongue, man, okay? This is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Okay? So we have given we have been given back the pure language to call upon the true name. Not Jesus Christ, man. No. The name of Yahweh. Alright. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? And we understand that those prayers. Are even more powerful when you speak them in the holy tongue, man. Okay? And to prove that, 
This is the prologue of Sirach. And I'm going to go down to where it says, all right, it says, Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret for the same things other than Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. Okay, so we understand that the, the, the vibration of the different tongues, all right, that is power behind it. It's power, you know, in words, man. All right. And so when you when you utter the things in Hebrew, okay, in the Lashwan Kodash, all right, is power in that language, man. Okay, which is why, because that's our that's our original language, man. Okay. And so when you pray to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah in the Lashwan Kodash, man. And those prayers are even more powerful. And those demons can't, they can't, you know, come against that, man. Okay? Because that's the language of the heavens, man. All right? So, with that being known, man, hey, we got to constantly, you know, uh, uh, tap into the resources the Lord has left for us, man. Okay? Psalm 62 and 7. It says, And Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is a refuge for us, Salah. Okay? So it says to pour out your heart before him, which is what? Prayer. Pray to him. All right? The scriptures tell you to, to, to pretty much, you know, uh, uh, put your burdens on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Okay, the things that we cannot bear on our own, we we give to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, this this is the uh, the heaviness of how powerful prayer is, man. And these devils know this, man. This is why they try to discourage you from praying. All right, this is why they discourage you from just you know even believing in the Lord in, in its entirety, man. Okay, but we we know where our, our salvation lies in, man. Okay, we know where our power uh, uh, lies in, man. Okay. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. All right? So, hey, we're not ignorant of anything. Okay? So, whether you believe that video in the beginning of this lesson is, is real or not, we know that is a this is Satan's world, and he's looking for any chance to, to, to take us out, man. So, hey, we are always consulting back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, all right? Constantly being in prayer, all right? Letting our, our requests be made known unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah for any and everything, man, okay? This is Acts 6 and 4. It says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, all right? So this is why we do these videos to exhort you believers, okay, to, to know, you know, what you're involved in, man. Okay, to know who your power is, man, to have faith in the correct doctrine, man. Okay, and it all starts with the name, the true name, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and so, hey, you, you having those names and you praying to those names, man, you have protection, all right, from the, these damn demons and these, and these, uh, these witches and warlocks that's put, that's trying to put spells on us, man. Okay. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah is greater than all that, all right? And he will deliver us from those, man, okay? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I'm going to end it right here, all right? I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kodash. Double honor to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation unto the elect. Shalom.